Hi everyone, welcome to another animated review, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite Disney films, The Little Mermaid. So, starting with the impact of this movie, because that's what it's most known for, really, other than the catchy songs in Ariel herself, is that it started the period that's known as the Disney Renaissance. Some say that the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit was the real start to it, but of Disney animated films, this was the first major one of the time, so I'm only counting that as what started it. Up until then, following the death of Walt Disney, the films became less well received and they weren't as financially successful. The Black Cauldron being the one that's the biggest example, and others just didn't have the same impact as Snow White or Cinderella. So, 30 years after the last Disney princess movie, Sleeping Beauty, Disney returned to their roots for the princess story which really is something that they've been doing in the past and since then. Cinderella, The Little Mermaid, and The Princess and the Frog are films to really pull the Disney company out of a rut that they get themselves into where the films just aren't making the biggest success and just not reaching that audience. So, yeah, this is a big deal for any Disney fan. And there's definitely many things to say about the film itself beyond that. The story is giving us more room than the previous Disney princess movies for characters since in the original story Ariel does go to the sea witch and try to get with her prince. She's the first princess to really put an active role in her story and yes we know how the original ends don't send me a million comments with it die seafoam blah 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 I am aware of that but this isn't a compare and contrast one unlike my how view so I'm not going to go into that right now but it gave more room for a more story based film that would allow for some action character growth all of which were missing in the previous Disney princess movies. And having an heroine play an active role. Complain about Ariel all you went today. But compared to the previous three Disney princesses. And she was quite the feminist by comparison. And times changed since then. So it's not really fair to complain about her. Sure, some people may have problem with the idea of changing yourself for a man, but at the same time, what they might not get is that Ariel really wants to be human, to be part of the human world. It's her dream, period. She didn't do it just for Eric. It's really a case of leaving your comfort zone in the pursuit of a dream more than the other, in my opinion at least. So the story had a more active heroine who, while flawed, did get to do more. And it just had a better message of how to dream and not just wait around for something to happen. 
The songs are probably one of the best parts about this movie, if not the best part. Part of Your World is just such a powerful song and just really makes you feel for Ariel. There are a million ways they could have gone around a song like that, making her seem whiny as possible, but she really isn't. You really feel for her and want her to have her dreams come true in that song. And just the way she bursts out with it, with her enthusiasm, and then ending softly and more sadly at the idea of how it can never be. And this is, again, done before Prince Eric, so, yeah, like I said again, not about finding the man. And Under the Sea is a nice, catchy song about how great the Lima Under the Sea is and to try to convince Ariel to stay. Disney numbers can just be pure fun sometimes, and Under the Sea is the perfect example of it. Kiss the Girl is... Another beautiful one, sang by Sebastian, and really showing how much he wants to help Ariel, as well as all of these other sea creatures coming in to help them, and just making the moment so romantic, and it definitely would have worked if it weren't for Flotsam and Jetsam. And, of course, we have our villain song, Poor Unfortunate Souls. Which is one of my favorite Disney villain songs, how it still has that eerie bit of trying to lure someone in, but still threatening, charismatic, which is Ursula completely, so it fits her very well. <laughs> the animation is great. The sea animation was based largely off of Pinocchio, I found out. A while ago, and all the characters, the fish, is also colorful, and it's not exactly cartoony, but everybody has so much expression, particularly some of the fish like Flounder and Sebastian and Scuttle. They don't go for overly realistic, like films like Bambi, which really adds to the whimsy and some of the humor in the film. And it knows when to look amazing and stunning, like when we're first arriving into Atlantica, as opposed to when it can be silly and cartoonish, such as when Chef Louis chases Sebastian. So the animation is another great one from Disney. On to the characters. Ariel, like I said, has gotten a reputation for being kind of whiny and complaining and yeah you could say that but at the same time she's the first princess to really have a drive and be willing to do something for it instead of just waiting around she's willing to make mistakes for it and boy does she which annoys a lot of people but again the part of making a journey for yourself is making bad choices so it makes Ariel more of a three-dimensional character if she does make bad choices and we see her torn at times between family and finding her prince and staying in the human world and she realizes her mistake briefly during the climax when she tries to apologize to her father Flounder is just so lovable and how he's afraid of everything, but he wouldn't do nothing to. Nothing could stop him from helping Ariel. He's just so adorable. I love him so much. I have a little Flounder pin. I lost him once in Disney. No, wait, Sebastian. I lost it, Sebastian. But. I have my flounder and Sebastian, and oh boy, Sebastian might be my favorite character. He has two great songs. He's stern, but at the same time, very caring for Ariel. He can be fun with his musical numbers, but he can also be serious and protective. 
Yeah, and it's just so great what him and how he's willing to put aside his own prejudice towards humans to make Ariel happy, even if it means confronting Triton later. And King Triton is a very layered Disney father. Unlike ones like a certain chicken that I don't want to mention, he does have good intentions even if he's very misguided. So it's easy to understand where he's coming from considering, well, one thing, how he's wrote that in the prequel one second, what he said about humans is technically right. They eat fish. A lot of them can be heartless and cruel to each other. So he does have Ariel's best interests at heart, but at the same time he has some major anger issues and has trouble listening, which makes him a believable character. Prince Eric is the first Disney prince to really have much personality in my opinion. Yeah, Prince Philip slays a dragon, but this one is a definite push in the right direction for personality-wise since you need more than cool for a character. You really do. So, Prince Eric knows what he's looking for and is just so dreaming about finding Ariel that It gives him so much personality and how even though he doesn't think Ariel's the one, he gladly takes her in and at times even almost falls for her, but Ursula interferes, of course. And he's just so sweet with Max, who is another great character. A great Disney dogs are amazing. That's enough to say for Max, really. He's a Disney dog. And now on to our villain, Ursula. Oh boy. Actually, she may be tied with Sebastian for my favorite character. She has this big, large presence and threatening, but at the same time, she's a lot of fun too. She acts like she's putting on a show for everyone around her most of the time. She can be charismatic even when people don't trust her. They might be tempted into a deal with her. No matter what, she can probably try to try to make a deal with someone. And seeing all the victims really shows that it's not a flaw with Ariel so much as her own persuasion. And the way she targets people at the worst. Poor unfortunate souls in pain indeed. That really makes her a great villain and one of my favorites. Ursula was really what beat Little Mermaid for me when I was a little above Beauty and the Beast because I liked her so much more than Gaston, really. So Little Mermaid is one of Disney's most popular for a great reason. It doesn't deserve the controversy of Ariel's character because for its time in 1989, it was a major step in the right direction from before. And you have to keep seeing it as a progression. Snow White, Cinderella, and Aurora did very little. Then Ariel comes along. Then Belle was a major step up. Jasmine, Pocahontas, and Mulan are also great heroines. And then... There's the ones that are coming that don't even have love interests, like Merida or Moana. So, it gets to the point where it was constantly escalating. So, that's really not a good reason to hate on this movie, even though I can see why. Ink droppers people, they don't quite get the ever side of the concept. But, it has great characters, great songs. And it's why we have so many great Disney movies like Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King and Hunchback of Notre Dame. So, it's definitely better down with its sweater. Take it from me.